Are you ready to go five pounds down and build some menopause strength? Grab your dumbbells and let's go. All right, beautiful bees, go ahead and get your dumbbells completely out of the way and let's get started with a warm up, which means that we're starting with some arm circles with high knees. You guys, welcome to the workout. I'm Paula B. I'm your best middle-aged fitness friend. And around here, we are all about making peace with your menopausal body by finding a healthy weight and moving in ways that feel like self love. And do you know what feels like self love? Finding that healthy weight with the 5-0 method where every single day we do five things that make you say, oh, I had no idea. It could be this simple to lose weight at our age. Every single day we're going to eat the right number of calories, which is not necessarily less than you were eating before. Every single day we're going to drink the right amount of water, which is half your body weight in pounds in fluid ounces of water. Every single day we're going to get the right amount of sleep by going to bed at the same time every night, getting up at the same time every morning and not worrying about how much in between was actual sleep because sometimes it's not. <laughs> Let's go ahead and do some arm crossers with booty kickers. Every single day we're going to do a nice moderate workout like this one. Oh my goodness, I've been looking forward to this one all week long. Doesn't mean the same workout every day, it just means a nice moderate workout every day, which is not necessarily more than you were doing before. And every single day we're going to manage our minds by finding our thoughts and deciding if they're helpful. And my friends, I have a helpful thought for me today. This one may or may not be helpful for you. And I'm going to tell you that the reason it's helpful for me, well, the reason it would be helpful for you, the reason it's ever helpful ever is because of how it makes you feel. If you feel good, it's a good, helpful thought. If you feel lousy, it is a lousy, unhelpful thought. And the same thought in different situations might be helpful in one time and unhelpful in another. How you feel is always the determining factor of whether or not it's helpful. Let's go ahead and do some welcome to my homes because welcome, welcome to Blossom's home. She's wandering around. She's really restless today and she'll either come in here or she won't. <laughs> here's the thing. Here's my helpful thought for today. It's cool story, bro. <laughs> which is one of the silliest thoughts in the world. And that's part of why it feels helpful to me. This was something, this, okay. This was something that my kids used to say to me kind of derogatorily. Like they would say it when I was getting all up in their business, when they were in like middle school, maybe, maybe high school. And they'd be like, cool story, bro. And it wasn't funny at the time, but now it's hilarious to me. And it's something that I tell myself when I'm going off the deep end and being dramatic and telling myself things. For example, you might be telling yourself, hey, speaking of, speaking of being dramatic, let me tell you, I've got the handy dandy gym boss here set for intervals of one and a half minutes. They are not short intervals today. We are doing strength all day, all the time, not all day, but all this workout. And we're just gonna move at a beautiful pace that feels absolutely amazing and delicious and strong. And I want you to know because of that not short interval that you might go a little lighter on your weights. I really want you to pick something that feels so good for you. I mean, like a helpful thought, pick a helpful weight. If it feels good for you, it is good for you. We're gonna get started with high knee side raises. I have to be very careful how I say that. I'm gonna go ahead and start the timer right now. And then here we go. We're gonna bring up one high knee at a time while raising our arms out to the side. And I am just gonna move at like the most relaxed pace. This is why I love strength and this is why I love a long strength interval is because your body can just really sink into this. You can really, really focus on form. Thinking about pulling in that core, thinking about not shrugging your shoulders up if you need to readjust in between reps. Help yourself to making this workout work for you. You guys, there is no repeating today. This is like my other half of my favorite thing. When we go with long intervals, it means that we only have to do everything once <laughs> because we are definitely working not necessarily to failure. That's really not the point of why we do long intervals. And please, if you go all the way to failure, you might have your weights just a little bit too heavy. When it beeps again, by the way, we're going to be doing swinging knees to elbows. We're going to have the weights right here at our shoulders elbows pointed forward. You're going to bring up one knee at a time and you're going to bring it to your opposite elbow first and then you'll bring it to the same side elbow before you bring it down. So it's really a lot of balancing. I've got lots of great balance moves for us today so that we can really be thinking not just about getting stronger, but about getting stronger in a couple of different ways. First of all, mentally stronger. This is a minute and a half. I tell you what, that takes some actual mental fortitude to keep doing an exercise for a not short interval. And that is one of the things that I don't think 
I'm not going to say we don't work on it often enough. We do actually work on it because it doesn't really matter how long the interval is. Here we go with swinging knees to elbows. I'm going to start by bringing my opposite elbow, no, opposite knee to my opposite elbow and then the same side and then back down. So really thinking about pulling in that core. What I'd like you to think about is touching your knee to your elbow without bringing your elbow to your knee. So you're really trying to bring your knee up as high as you can. Does it matter if they touch? Absolutely not. This isn't about actually touching your knee to your elbow. It really is about thinking about where your body is in space and time. Really thinking about getting that last little squeeze so that you're working every bit of your abdominal muscles. And because of course we're going across your body with this little bit of a, a squeeze across, you're getting some oblique action in there too. My friends, this workout is so good for you in so many ways. And yet you might be telling yourself a story about it. And I will tell you, just so you know, literally everything you think is a story of some kind. By the way, when it beeps again, we're doing sidekick curls which means that we're going to be doing biceps curls so you can have your elbows locked deeply into your waist. And you're going to really try and isolate that biceps muscle by having your elbows locked in. The more you move your elbows, the more you're moving your arms, the more it actually is like a shoulder and back exercise. By the way, don't mind me bobbling here. I'm going to slow down a little bit. <laughs> this is cool story, bro. I don't have very good balance. That's a story. Do you know that when you tell yourself something about your weight loss journey or your strength journey or about your life ever, when you tell yourself things, here we go with those sidekick curls. So elbows locked in nice and tight. You're going to really think about having your core pulled in as we do. And I'm going to think not about trying to kick to the side, but really about raising to the side. Really thinking about using those side butt muscles. Sometimes when we do side kicks, like with cardio moves, I'm moving kind of quickly and I'm not taking the time to really dig in and squeeze and thinking about that whole hip complex. For me, Personally, these bicep curls are actually pretty easy, so that gives me the mental brain space to really be working on my glutes. You are absolutely welcome to focus on whatever part feels like it needs the most focus. Now, for you, that might be balance, honestly. It might be the bicep curls. Whatever you can focus on right now is the place to focus right now. As you get better and more efficient, this exercise will get easier and you will find different parts of your form that you can finesse. If this is the first time you're doing something like this, especially for this long, my friend, it might just be a matter of like, okay, I can barely stand on my feet. So let me just try and do any of it all at the same time. This is a little bit coordinated. When it beeps again, we're doing side bend press ups. This is an exercise that I have never done before. So you might not be good at it. The side bend is the one where we do not move our hips at all. You are really trying to isolate your abdominal and oblique muscles. And that really might take a little bit extra thinking on your part. When you are standing perfectly still and not letting your hips do the work, you will figure out exactly where your abs and obliques are. So feet about hip width apart. We're going to bend to the side. It's a very small motion. It's wherever your spine can take you. And then as you come up, we're doing a press up and then back down. And then you're going to bend to the other side, not letting that hip jut out the opposite way and then press up overhead. We are moving at such a deliciously slow pace today that there might be a part of you that's thinking, this isn't very much work. I'm not burning very many calories. This isn't really going to get me where I want to go. And let me tell you something about building muscle. My friends, first of all, it's a slow process. I have a lot of people come to me in the first week or two of losing weight where their weight is fluctuating up and down and people will be like, oh, don't worry about it. Muscle weighs more than fat and you're probably gaining muscle and all kinds of things about gaining muscle. Yes, you can gain muscle. You absolutely can gain muscle, but it takes a while. And muscle doesn't weigh more than fat. Just FYI, this is, this is such a pet peeve of mine and I apologize because <laughs> this might sound a little ranty. <laughs> But here's the thing, a pound is a pound. Whatever, whatever is on you, if it is a pound of it, it weighs a pound. Muscle is differently shaped and it behaves differently than fat, is really what we all mean to say when we are saying that muscle weighs more than fat. It doesn't. When it beeps, by the way, we're doing a curtsy front punch. And I want to be really clear that you do not have to come all the way down in a curtsy. I'm probably just going to do basically a little cross back step and a front punch at the same time, really thinking about, of course, having your core pulled in. When have I ever not said that? Weight's right here at your like chest, maybe mid body. As you step back and out to the side, you're just going to do a little front punch. Now, after the course of a, over the course of a minute and a half, this might get real tough. There are a couple of different things you can do. If the weights feel okay, but like maybe your elbows feel like they're taking on a little bit more of the work, 
just keep it a little bit closer to your body. If the weights feel heavy and you can't even get the weight in front of you, drop your weights and pick up something lighter or don't pick up anything at all. I gotta be honest with you, this curtsy lunge and having your arm out in front of you actually is load bearing work. You are fighting against gravity. You are getting muscle building work done whether you have weights in your hand or not. My friend, if you are moving, you are toning your body. How about that? Cool story, bro. <laughs> Here's the thing, really specifically, coming back to that whole, I'm not burning enough calories, I'm not doing enough to lose weight. The thing about your muscles, a couple of different things about your muscles. First of all, is that after a muscle workout, you are actually burning calories at an elevated rate because of all of the adaptations that your body has to do to build muscle, to repair your muscles. You're actually burning calories at an elevated rate for like up to 24 to 48 hours. I've read, I've read varying reports and I think it really depends on a lot of different things. So I'm not gonna try and get into exactly how long it might be. By the way, when it beeps again, we're doing a squat with a front kick back kick. You're welcome. I know you're going to love this <laughs> when your brain offers you. That's hard. Yeah. Cool story, bro. So squat with a front kick, back kick, and then try and land that foot right underneath your hips so that you can do another squat with a front kick and a back kick. This is all balance all the time. Land that foot just so. You could very easily not have weights in your hands for this one. The weights aren't enhancing this exercise a lot. It is helping you resist gravity a little bit more than you would normally, but if you're having trouble with the balance, I'd much rather have you focus on the balance. Truly, at our age, I would be hard pressed to pick between building muscle and building balance. They're both very important, but here's the thing. If you have a lot of muscle and can't balance, you could still fall and hurt yourself. If you have excellent balance, you have the, you have the, the wherewithal to be able to build muscle rather than falling and injuring yourself. I do actually think that balance is more important Ooh, I don't like making that choice. <laughs> that's a real Sophie's choice right there. Let's go for both. In fact, that's what we're doing right now. Muscles and balance when it beeps again. Okay, I should have practiced this before I turned on the camera. <laughs> we're doing butterfly side kicks. This is the one where you just, you have to, you have to think about things the way I do and nobody does, but there we go. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna have one hand directly underneath your chin while that elbow comes up and makes the butterfly wing on that side. Your other hand is going down towards the opposite foot or the, you know, the same side foot of it to make the other side of the butterfly wing. So you're making the top of a butterfly on one side, the bottom of a butterfly on the other. It doesn't really look like a butterfly. It's probably letter X's, but I already have a exercise called letter X's. And so I had to call this something else. And this reminds me of butterfly wings. <laughs> you guys, cool story, bro. I know, I know. <laughs> But here's the thing, I love this exercise because oh my goodness, it works your balance, it works your body. Do you feel that side butt muscle every time you raise that leg out to the side? Do you feel the tops of your shoulders working and even into your triceps when that elbow comes up nice and high? Yes, this is a full body exercise. We're barely even moving and yet you are getting basically every single muscle of your body involved and working on proprioception and working across your body. This is all for your brain and your body and your muscles. You guys, here's the thing about menopause. You know, you know that like older women, we're like susceptible to falling. We are susceptible to osteoporosis. We're susceptible to all kinds of things. And have you ever wondered why? Well, here's why, by the way, when it beeps again, we're doing three point crunches. Here's why, because after you go through menopause or while you're going through menopause and afterwards, you are actually losing muscle at a faster rate than you can make it. So three point crunches means that you've got your elbows out nice and wide, weights right here on your shoulder. You're bringing up one high knee and crunching down into it while you are bringing your knee up. Earlier we were trying to bring our knee up, now we're actually bringing our elbows down and meeting in the middle. So high knee comes up, both elbows come in, all three points crunch in the middle of this exercise. We're really thinking about squeezing from those abdominal muscles. The more you think about squeezing, like really pulling in your core and squeezing your abdomen, oh yeah, that's you working those muscles. That's how we get them to look so nice and be so strong. Rather than just moving your elbows and moving your leg and kind of letting your middle squish in the middle, go ahead and think about squeezing that muscle in the middle. My friends, this is how we get the best
results from our workouts. We use our brain to make our body stronger. Here's the thing. The reason you're losing muscle and therefore losing bone, because by the way, when you lose muscle, you also lose bone. It's related when you make muscles, you also help yourself make bones. It's because of estrogen. Estrogen all these years was actually helping you build muscles and bones. And now that we don't have as much, you are not making muscles and bones the way you used to. It means that we used to, before menopause, just kind of go about our lives and we had plenty of muscles and plenty of bones because your body was doing that anyways. When it beeps again, we're doing bent over flies. Now that estrogen isn't helping you out with that, it's your job. It's your job. Here we go with bent over flies. It's almost like a half of a deadlift here. You're sticking your butt out behind you. Your back is nice and straight. Your core is pulled in nice and strong. Hands face each other. Palms face each other. And then we're going to fly out to the side. When you fly out to the side, I always say this like, oh, you're going to try and get your palms to face the ground. I don't care if your palms face the ground. Whatever you can do with your weights that is not you like momentum hoisting the weights, I really want you to move as slowly as you can. Yeah, that's not as fun, right? Cool story, bro, but this is really good for you. <laughs> One of the ways that we build muscle, it's a, it's a concept called time under tension. The slower you move and the slower you are resisting gravity, the better it is for you, the more muscle you can build. And it's, it's one of the things that I think about because I love to move fast. I'm definitely a cardio girl, except that I am so becoming a strength girl. The more that I learn about menopause and about how our bodies change after menopause, during and after menopause, the more I love my strength workouts. When it beeps again, by the way, we're going to do step back, press up. I might not love all the exercises that we do to build muscles. I'm thinking about this. Y'all, if you've ever worked out with me before, you've heard my cool story, bro, about how I don't love to step back. It is absolutely the hardest plane of motion for me. I've gotten really good at sideways lateral motion because I practice it so much. You know, if you've worked out with me before, you know we do a lot of lateral motion here. It is where you are most at risk for falling. Okay, so step back, press up. Your weights are going to be right here, like your shoulder-ish. As you step back, same arm goes up. This is a same side body thing. Sometimes we go across your body and sometimes that, honestly, that would actually feel easier. The reason I'm doing this is because you are throwing yourself really out of balance on one whole side at a time. With your other side where you're keeping everything in, that's where all your balance is. With your arm up and your leg back, you really have to think about left side versus right side. Generally speaking, when I go across my body, I've got one something strong, either my right arm or my right leg, and then one something less strong, the other side. By doing this, I am forcing, truly for me, the left half of my body to really think about being its best. Having your core pulled in, of course, when we've got weights going up overhead, we're really thinking about pulling that core in, thinking about where your body is in space and time. And my friends, I want you to know that if the cool story bro does not feel good to you, if that feels very dismissive, if it feels like you're speaking rudely to yourself, it's not a helpful story or helpful story. It's not a helpful thought for you. When, we, when the timer beeps again, we're doing deadlifts with a front raise. Yes, these exercises are getting a little bit harder for me. I did that on purpose. I really wanted us to end on a nice strong note. This has been such an amazing week. So many great workouts. It's, it's my birthday week and we're coming to the end of the year. Here we go with deadlifts. So core is pulled in nice and tight. Your booty is going to push back, 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 back. As your booty pushes back, of course your torso leans forward. And then as we come up, up. We're getting set in a straight up position and then we're bringing our arms as high as your shoulders if at all possible. If you can't bring your arms that high, you have two options. You can drop your weights or you can just not go as high. I don't want you to have to use momentum or shrugging your shoulders to get the weights into position. You could, not always, it's not a guarantee, like you're not going to absolutely injure yourself, but you could injure yourself because of that form. Hoisting with momentum or shrugging your shoulders has the potential to bring in like your lower back or even just be moving in a way that is not building muscle for you but is kind of tweaking your muscles because of the way your body is moving. I would much rather you move with excellent form and lower weights because then you're getting all the benefit. You are actually getting stronger rather than possibly injuring yourself. I'm going to turn this way just a little bit. Oh, good golly. Yes, I remember. 
I remember <laughs> that we are getting more difficult, <laughs> but the next interval, technically speaking, is the end of our workout. We are doing super slow swimming frogs. It's going to be a lot of up overhead. I want you to think about whether or not that's going to work for you. You might have lower weights. You might drop your weights. You might figure out what feels best for you. You could also keep your weights a little bit lower rather than going into a full press up. A swimming frog, generally speaking, a cardio move, we start with our hands up overhead, and this is the default position. As we bring them down nice and slowly. We're bringing out one knee at a time, really thinking about having your core pulled in nice and tight. If you'd like to rest in this position, you help yourself, my friend. There really is no resting position with this one. Hands up overhead feels like time under tension for your shoulders. Having one foot out to the side is time under tension for your abs, your obliques, your whole leg, your glutes. I mean, like everything that's balancing you. So you pick what feels best to you. And I will tell you that when we are done with this one, we are done, but of course I've got a built-in finisher. I've got one more interval for us of everybody's favorite. You know what it is. I'm not even going to say it. You tell me, you tell me what your favorite is. It's my favorite. <laughs> Y'all, I actually think after, after these super slow swimming frogs, I legitimately think Drinky Birds is gonna feel like a relief. No matter if you love them, hate them, feel neutral about them. I mean, cool story, bro, but I think they're gonna feel easier than these super slow swimming frogs, right? I know, here's the thing about Drinky Birds. It's a single leg deadlift. So you are thinking about it the same way. You are actually thinking about your rear chain. You're thinking about your butt, not really quite driving the motion in the same way that it does with a regular deadlift, but having that leg that's coming up behind you is the part of your body that is driving the motion. You are only bringing your torso forward as far as your rear leg will push. So your body's a nice straight line, like a teeter totter. As you bring up that rear leg, that's where your torso goes. Wherever your leg goes, your torso goes. You can absolutely bend over further. Of course you could. We're not bending over. You're letting your leg push you over. Gently, obviously, you're not trying to hurt yourself, but you are letting that leg strength guide this motion. Now, of course, some of what is guiding this motion is your balance. Also, feel free to drop your weights completely and hang on to something so that you can really focus on balance. The more you are squeezing your glute, the more you are using your glutes. It's not just a matter of flinging that leg up behind you, but really finding the motion right there deep in your butt. That sounded hilarious, and I'm going to leave it there <laughs> because your power, my friend, is deep in your butt. <laughs> For reals though, those are some of the biggest and strongest muscles of your body and it's the reason we walk upright as humans. We have, I, I, I don't know if it's the strongest glutes on the planet, I'm not going to go that far. But it's why we walk upright, it's how we became human, is because of our super strong glutes. So use it, my friend, your butt is your superpower and that is a cool story, bro. <laughs> my friend, here's the thing. You are always, always telling yourself a story and sometimes those stories need to be recognized as such. Go ahead and put your weights all the way down, my friend. That was amazing. Oh, that was good stuff. That was a great workout. Do you feel amazing right now? Like super duper strong? I know, me too. That is a cool story, bro. <laughs> Sometimes it's just really good to remind yourself that your brain is a drama queen. My brain is a drama queen. Let me just put it that way. My brain can make a story out of anything. And sometimes it really is helpful to me when it sounds funny, when it sounds loving, when it sounds like I'm just giving myself a little nudge. I'm not making fun of myself. I'm not beating myself up. I'm not being rude. This is a self love practice that I just remind myself that I'm telling a cool story, bro. <laughs> you guys, oh my gosh, what a fantastic job you did today. I hope, I hope that you have had the best week of your entire life, because I know I have had one of the best weeks of my entire life. You know, I have quite a few of them, about 52 of them a year. <laughs> Go ahead and open it up nice and wide. Oh, that feels so good, so open to whatever the world brings me, and then give yourself a hug and a pat on your sweaty, strong back. I have had a fantastic week for reals. I hope that you have too, no matter what you do tomorrow. I have at this point, I have 190 
workout videos for you that are weight loss centric, that are specifically for weight loss over 50. I have over a thousand videos just in general, but 190 of them that are really, really, really specifically for weight loss for women over 50, where we talk about this stuff. So help yourself to any of them. If you'd like to repeat this week, repeat this week. If you want to go back and pick your favorites, go back and pick your favorites. No matter what you do, my friend, thank you for working out with me. Make sure you subscribe before you go so you get the next series and I'll see you tomorrow.